In this room sits a remarkable woman. She's Miss Helen Keller. She does not see the room or the book that she's reading. She sees nothing. She does not hear the rustling of the curtains behind her. She hears nothing. She is deaf, deaf and blind. But if you enter a room, she will know it. Your lightest footfall will tell her you are coming. It will even tell her who you are, if she knows you, as she knows her old friend, Polly Thompson. Polly has been with Helen Keller 40 years. For nearly half of these, she has been Helen's only companion, Helen's eyes and ears upon the world. She talks with Helen by a finger system in which each letter has a sign, like this. In reaching out beyond her dark and soundless night, Helen depends most on touch. Two other senses remain to her. There's taste and there's smell. Scent, the scent of objects and places and people, tells Helen much that we learn with eyes and ears. But her hand is her chief link with the outer world, with Polly, with Anne, the part-time helper, with everyone she encounters. With her hand, she reads Anne's lips. She answers with her voice. It is an unnatural voice, and it is her great sorrow. For all our years of effort, Helen has never learned to speak clearly. This isn't strange, for since she was a baby, she has not heard a word spoken, nor seen lips forming one. But let Helen, with Polly's help, tell you. It is not blindness or deafness that burns me in my dust. Others. It is not blindness or deafness that bring me my darkest hours. It is the attitude that I put men in not being able to speak normally. It is the acute disappointment in not being able to speak normally. Longingly, I think how much more good I might have done if I had only acquired my children spirit. Longingly I feel how much more good I could have done if I had acquired normal speech. But rather than this sorrowful experience, I understand more fully. But out of this sorrowful experience, I understand more oh, fully human strivings, all human strivings, what it ambition, and the infinite capacity of hope, and the infinite capacity of hope. 